Um, but in terms of you know who you're going to um, admit into your moral sphere, we have some very serviceable intuitions about how we treat the people we accept in our sphere. And the challenge for modernity, the challenge for civilization, is to, to extend the sphere of our moral community to include the entire species and even other species so that we really, we really don't have these, these us and them boundaries uh, that we have. And our us and them boundaries are, are really propped up by dogmatism. I mean, they're propped up by nationalism, they're tr- propped up by racism, and there's many ways to divide your world uh, dogmatically. But the most insidious us and them boundary, f- from my point of view, is religion. I mean, it really is. It, religion posits a, a transcendental object between you and this other person. I mean, not only are you different because of your skin color or your political persuasion or because you speak a different language, you are different for all time. For what you believe about God and what He believes about God are so opposed uh, that that and it, it's going to require eternity to you know an eternity of, of punishment in His case to work out that difference. Um, so I think it's a very uh, I think our more you know, this question of morality is, is an important one to to focus on because many people are attached to religion. Not because they're convinced that that the, the metaphysics make sense, but because they they just see no other alternative to um, teaching kids, you know, right and wrong. I think there's uh, a few obvious things to point out. One is that you, we, we clearly don't get our morality out of our holy books, because when you go into the holy books, they are bursting with cruelty. I mean, the, the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, the Quran. These are uh, Profoundly cruel and morally ambiguous books, at best. I mean, the you know the Ten Commandments, uh, the first four commandments have nothing to do with morality. They have to do with with theological offenses. You know, don't take any other gods before me. Don't take God's name in vain. No graven images, etc. Don't work on the Sabbath. What are you supposed to do when people break those commandments? You're supposed to kill them. I mean, this is unbelievably immoral. Uh, and yet, and we're not doing that now, not because. The, the book itself is so wise. I mean, to take a, a more relevant example, slavery. I mean, slavery is clearly endorsed in the Bible. It's endorsed in the Old Testament. It's endorsed in the New Testament. We all agree that slavery is wrong. We, we conquered that ground morally through some very hard-fought conversations and also wars. Um, religion was a very little help in that. I mean, it, there were... It's, it's true that abolitionists were cherry-picking scripture, trying to find ways to to justify their project. But their project wasn't coming from scripture because scripture is clear; it supports slavery. There was there's, the evil of slavery is not recognized in the Bible, and it is it is certainly not repudiated in the Bible. Um, and so the, the the slaveholders of the South were on the winning side of that theological argument, and and it. it Religion was an impediment to making that that moral progress. Um, again, the fact, even if it were not an impediment, even if it were extremely useful, that would not be a reason to believe that any of our books were dictated by an omniscient being. This is a um, a common criticism: the idea that the atheist is guilty of of a literalist reading of Scripture, um, no better than the reading of fundamentalists. It's a very naive uh, way of approaching religion, and there's a far more sophisticated and nuanced view of religion um, on offer. And the atheist is disregarding that. Um, a few problems with this: first, is anyone making that argument is is uh, failing to acknowledge just how many people really do approach these texts literally or functionally. I mean, whether they're selective literalists or literal, all the way down the line, there is a there are certain passages in these in scripture that just cannot be read figuratively, um, and uh, people really do live by the lights of what is literally laid out in these books. So you know, the Quran says hate the infidel, and Muslims hate the infidel because the Quran spells it out. Ad nauseum. Um, now, uh, it's true that you can cherry pick scripture 
and you can look for all the good parts. You can ignore where it says in Leviticus that if a, a woman is not a virgin on her wedding night, you're supposed to stone her to death on her father's doorstep. You can ignore that. And, and now, to my knowledge, all Jews and Christians uh, do ignore that. In fact, that's not true. There are some Christians who actually do you know, reconstruction as Christians, dominion as Christians in the U.S., who will say, yeah, no, I think the, the penalty for adultery should be death. I mean, so there are, there are people who are, have the courage of their convictions there. Um, but most of us, most religious people, ignore those passages, which really can only be read literally, um, and say that, oh, they were only appropriate for the time, and they don't, don't apply now. And uh, likewise, Muslims try to have the same reading of passages that advocate holy war. They say, well, these were appropriate to those battles that Muhammad was fighting, but now we don't have to fight those battles. Um, this is all a, a good thing, but we should recognize what is, uh, what's, it, what's happening here. People are feeling pressure from a host of, of all too human concerns that have nothing in principle to do with God. I mean, secularism and human rights and democracy and scientific progress, these have, have made certain passages in Scripture untenable. Okay? So this is coming from outside religion. And religion is now making a great show of its sophistication in kind of grappling with these, with these pressures. Um, but once again, this is, this is a, an example of religion losing the argument with modernity. It's an example of you know, the recent shooting at Virginia Tech. Uh, the, you know, the mother of, this, of the shooter uh, recognized that there was something wrong with her son. You know, he's suffering from some kind of mental problem. In the context of her uh, rather doctrinaire Christianity, she did not take him to a psychiatrist. She took him from church to church in search of exorcism. She actually found a church that performed an exorcism. So there were, there were, just picture this. There's some, uh, you know, we have a, a uh, an atrocity in the making. Uh, we have a, a dangerously mental ill college student. We have a concerned mother whose worldview about mental health is trimmed down through the 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 uh, keyhole of of uh, a kind of medieval Christianity. Uh, and we have a church willing to put forward its expertise in the performance of an exorcism. Um, it would be a lot better if everyone involved had a 21st century view of mental health. Um, no one is, re moderate people, moderate Christians and Jews and Muslims have to look at this situation uh, and say, well, there's something wrong here. It'd be better to go to a psychiatrist. Um, but the problem is you can't show what's wrong in terms of scripture. You can't show what's wrong in terms of, of religion because in terms of religion, the, the mother was right. I mean, there, is, there are demons and Jesus cast them out. You know, I mean, it's, it's, demonic possession is actually a problem. Um, the only reason why we're, we, we're, we don't take it seriously is because we have a wider view of, of the universe. The universe, that view of the universe did not come to us from religion, it came from science. Let's just grant the possibility that there, there is a creator God who's omniscient, who occasionally authors books. Uh, and he's going to give us a book, uh, the most useful book. He's a loving God, he's a compassionate God, um, and he's going to give us a guide to life. Uh, he's got a scribe, the scribe's going to write it down. What's going to be in that book? I mean, just think of how good a book would be if it were authored by an omniscient deity. I mean, th there is not a single line in the Bible or the Quran that could not have been authored by a, a, a first century uh, person. I mean, there's not, there's not one, one reference to anything. There's a, there, are, there are pages and pages about how to sacrifice animals and keep slaves and who to kill and why. Um, there's nothing about uh, electricity. There's nothing about DNA. There's nothing about how do, infectious disease, the principles of infectious disease. Um, there, there's, there's nothing particularly useful, and there's a lot of uh, Iron Age barbarism in there and superstition. Uh, this does not, I mean, this is not a candidate book. I mean, I can go into a, to, to any Barnes and Noble blindfolded and pull a book off a shelf which is going to have more relevance, uh, more wisdom uh, for the 21st century than the Bible or the Quran. I mean, it's, re it's really not an exaggeration. It's, it's, it, every one of our specific sciences 
has superseded and surpassed the wisdom of Scripture. From, from cosmology to psychology to economics, we know more about ourselves uh, than anyone writing the Bible or the Quran did. And that is a, a distinctly inconvenient fact for, the, the, for anyone w- wanting to believe that this book was, was uh, dictated by the, the creator of the universe. Problems with this idea that, I mean, first of all, that that's an unfalsifiable thesis. I mean, and there are infinite numbers of unfalsifiable theses that you're not tempted to believe. And we could believe that this is we're in the matrix, and you know, I mean, that that you go down that uh, path, and there's uh, a lot that could be asserted by people who are sure we're in the matrix, and we're you know, some alien civilization is simulating us on a, their hard drive. Um, uh, one problem is that we have many holy books authored by the creator of the universe, and they're in conflict. You know, they're not. It, the New Testament makes it perfectly clear that Jesus is the Son of God, really the Son of God, and you have to believe this, otherwise you're going to spend eternity in hell. The Quran says twice that Jesus was not the Son of God, and anyone who believes he's the Son of God will spend eternity in hell. I mean, this, is, this offers as much room for compromise as a coin toss. Uh, so, so let's say let's say we just knew that one of those claims were was right. You know, we have a uni- we Now it's we've 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 eliminated all the other possibilities. We're living in this challenging universe where God has given us a highly imperfect book and and asked us to grapple with it. But now we have the biblical claim, the New Testament claim to the divinity of Jesus and, and it, the, the necessity of believing in it, and the Quranic claim that belief in Jesus' divinity leads to damnation. You know, which is more likely, that, that one of those is right uh, and the other is wrong, or that we have these competing tribes who are toiling in the context of just abysmal ignorance about the, the world and, and the, you know, the, the birth of the cosmos and the, and the destiny of any individual soul after death. Uh, you know, I would put my lot in with a wider view of the circumstance, but even if we granted your premise that, no, no, there's a good reason to believe that one of these books is perfect, we're still with a, a coin toss situation. We don't know whether to be a Christian or a Muslim. Um, and we're noticing that people are, are choosing basically on, on the basis of accidents of birth. I mean, you're just accidentally born in Afghanistan and then you, you choose to be a Muslim. Um, and likewise with Christianity elsewhere. Uh, it is a, it's a very strange sort of loving God who would have created this circumstance. It, by mere accident of birth, you are raised to believe that a certain book was was uh, and and let's say rightly raised to believe that this book was you know the perfect book but if you happen to be born in china you know you go for centuries without hearing about this it's a, it's a, a stray a, a for for i think obvious reasons a totally provincial and and uh, implausible scenario and yet it's the scenario that most people believe in the 21st century astonishes me when I read the newspaper uh, or watch the news is how many problems are the direct result of what people believe about God. I mean, there are days when I open the New York Times where fully half of the stories are, in a way that's unacknowledged by the, 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 the paper, relate to people's religious convictions. Um, it's, I mean, I, you know, I mentioned the Virginia Tech shooting. I mean, this was the, the role that religion played in providing a context for this shooting was never really discussed in the media. But I mean, we, we just hear that the mother happened to be, you know, a devout Christian and schlepped her child from church to church in search of exorcism. Um, uh, I, I just see continually uh, our attention bound up in uh, uh, these competing ideas about God. Uh, at best, this is this is often just a waste of time, but at worst, it is just it is manufacturing violence and and unnecessary conflict uh, and misuses of our resources. And what's more, it is it it is very rare that.